Last night, we closed this news hour with a deconstruction of the rather startling and extremely lengthy conclusions of Glenn Beck of Fox News that the GE building, indeed all of Rockefeller Center here in New York, constituted some sort of giant communist, fascist, socialist, totem pole of symbols and imagery and subliminal indoctrination. Our number one story tonight, that's when we hit poor Glenn with something he did not know, that the building in which he does his show is part of Rockefeller Center, that whatever malign influences might be emanating from the very walls here, they're also eating away at his brain. There's still plenty of Beck paranoia soup left over, plus we never even got to his factual errors, so tonight, part two. Oh, you know what? Sure, this is it. This is from Moscow. The farmer and the worker. The hammer and the sickle. This capitalist had a hammer and a sickle? Had the worker and the farmer, just like Moscow on his building, a progressive? The owl and the pussycat. You left out the owl and the pussycat. Factual error number one. The Rockefellers, he said, were progressives? John D. Rockefeller, the inventor of the oil business. Nelson Rockefeller, four-term Republican governor of New York, Republican vice president. David Rockefeller, head of the Chase Bank, tried to sneak the Shah into this country for medical treatment, touching off the Iran hostage crisis. They were progressives? Oh, by the way, one other little tidbit, completely unrelated. Commissioned by Rockefeller. All the things hidden by Rockefeller. A progressive, a big leader. The Rockefeller Foundation, they, um, they gave a big award and an awful lot of credibility to, um, oh, Van Jones, our new green job czar. Yeah. Wow, that seems weird, huh? Weirder than the rest of your show? Not really, no. Van Jones, by the way, is the guy who founded the organization that has already peeled off 57 of Beck's advertisers, so he really doesn't like Van Jones. And the Rockefeller Foundation once gave Van Jones a fellowship. That's absolutely true, but that gives us factual error number two. The Rockefeller Foundation is a hotbed of communism. The Rockefeller Foundation, whose past and current trustees include such notable left-wingers as retired Supreme Court Justice Sandra Day O'Connor, on the right. The Republican nominee for president in 1916, Charles Evans Hughes, and that wildest of communists, Eisenhower's Cold War Secretary of State John Foster Dulles. One other note about this Van Jones. He's such a communist evildoer that Harper Collins published his book. Harper Collins is the publishing house owned by Glenn Beck's boss, Rupert Murdoch. <laughs> now, there's plenty of yelling and screaming to come here, but two more factual errors before we start to have the fun. So the last question that we had for today's show was, do 20th century progressives love freedom or fascism? That's just in, Sparky. It's the 21st century now has been for nine years or eight years, depending on your definition. If these are 20th century symbols put up in the 1930s, what in the hell do they have to do with today? Now, what does this have to do with today? <laughs> I don't know. I gathered. Well, now we can cut to the core and the fourth and final factual error. All of the images that I've shown you here, thousands of people walk by every single day. Jack, our sound engineer, how long do you work in that building, Jack? For 29, years. 29 years he's been walking by that stuff. He said, I never even seen it. I've never noticed it. Of course not, until somebody po pa points it out. During the height of the Cold War, Hammer and Sickle and, and the fascist Mussolini carved there in Rockefeller Plaza, and nobody notices it. And that begs the most essential of questions. Assuming the very walls here really do reek with socialist propaganda that John D. Rockefeller put up personally during his lunch hour in between squeezing his corporate opposition into sawdust. If nobody notices this stuff, what the hell are you talking about it for? If it's totally indecipherable to the average person, why does it matter? Glenn never explains that. And after listening to him explain the rest of it, it is totally indecipherable. But let me show you what it is. This is a, here's a guy with the horses on a chariot, and there's a kid here with the sun. So let's just take it piece by piece, and I'll show you what this means. First, the sun. The sun represents the bright tomorrow. Right here, underneath the boy. Here's the sun. Show me the boy. This is the youth. The next one is the youth here, leading the way. Notice he's ahead of the horses. Are the horses Mr. Ed and Barbaro? Hey, notice he's ahead of the horses. He's leading the way into the bright future of tomorrow. Now, this man standing on a chariot, the wheel. The wheel is always representative of, of industry in any of these progressive uh, uh, pictures or paintings or artwork. So you've got the wheel. Now, let's go to the horses, please. He's standing on a chari uh, chariot. You've got the industry and the, and the engines of industry. But who's in the back here? 
Colonel Mustard in the library with the candlestick. <laughs> I showed you the NBC building. I've been showing you some of the things from Rockefeller Plaza that have been in plain sight, plain sight for all these years. It's all there, black and white, clear as crystal. You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You bumped into the ceiling, which now has to be washed and sterilized. You get nothing. You lose. Good day, sir. <laughs> First, let me show you what everything means. It's going to be hard to see, but in the background, here's a crowd of Americans. In the, ba in the background, you see the police beating people. Angry mobs, I guess. Here's the evil army of capitalism up here with the gas mask and the war planes and everything. Capitalism, army, awful. Then there's the wonderful people over here of Moscow. And here are the onion domes of Moscow. I've seen it happening. They've got to tell people the ocean's dying, plankton's dying, it's people. Soil and green is made out of people. Next thing they'll be breeding us like cattle for food. You've got to tell them. You've got to tell them. You tell everybody. Listen to me, Beck. You've got to tell them. Soil and green is people. You might define their freedom as fascism, but no, no, no. At the time that was done, the progressives thought Mussolini was a good guy. They thought that was the ultimate system of government. You know I love you, baby. I wouldn't leave you. It wasn't my fault, honest. I ran out of gas. I had a flat tire. I didn't have enough money for cab fare. My tux didn't come back from the cleaners. An old friend came in from out of town. Someone stole my car. There was an earthquake, a terrible flood, locusts. It wasn't my fault, I swear to God. <laughs> Let me just show you the relief here again in front of, um, I think it's the 636 Fifth Avenue in Rockefeller Plaza. This was uh, this is fascism. If you see the young boy led there right into the, into the sunrise, a bright tomorrow, and the strong man holding back industry and the engines of industry. That, in that picture, that represents Mussolini. That's what it was carved for. That sounds like fascism to me, and it, drive, it drives me nuts that nobody knows what this is. I am the fool for Christ and the paraclete of Caborca. I am the wrath of the lamb and the angel of the bottomless pit. <laughs> Man's trying to control it here. This is disease. Right above syphilis is uh, right here. Oh, Rockefeller. Yeah, the artist didn't like Rockefeller too much, even though Rockefeller commissioned this art for the lobby of NBC. Uh, oh, and then one other thing. Who's the savior? Oh, right over here. Lenin. The body snatchers are here. Can't you see? Everyone, they're here already. You're next. And look at what they've already done at the Fox News building itself, part of Rockefeller Center. We took the pictures of these symbols there less than 36 hours ago, an outdated hieroglyph of Alan Combs. Look, Bill O'Reilly's bar mitzvah picture, but not one symbol representing the Glenn Beck. Overnight, 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 they sneaked in. The communist symbol mongers sneaked in and magically there appeared at that Rockefeller Center, the symbol of the Beck. This is a travesty, a travesty of a mockery of a sham, of a mockery of a travesty of two shut mockeries of a sham. And worst of all, worst of all, look what they've done to this woman in Raritan, New Jersey. Notice I have recorded an episode of Glenn Beck, the 2 a.m. show for one hour on 8-5. Now, look at my scheduled recordings. Do you see what it says? It says Glenn I F C K. Now, I wonder how that happened. Who might have done that? John D. Rockefeller did that from the grave. He really did it. You maniac! You blew it up! Oh, damn you! Damn you all to hell!